Let's prepare for healing and deliverance as we join Prophetess Miranda. Stay tuned. The live will be starting soon. Get ready for change as Prophetess Miranda delivers a word of healing and deliverance. Here are a few announcements while you wait. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when Prophetess is live. Join us on the Prophetic View conference call at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. You don't want to miss the powerful word that goes forth. Prophetess Miranda's new book called Prophetic War and Decree will teach you how to war and decree for your breakthrough. This book is guaranteed to make you a warrior and step into the place God has called you to be. To purchase the book and get information on upcoming healing and deliverance services and events, make sure to visit our main website at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to give to the ministry, visit our website or text the word GIVE to 504 500 4776. Do you need mentorship? Prophetess is accepting applications for the Sears Group program for prophetic mentorship. Visit our website today to sign up. Stay connected with the ministry by joining us on YouTube. For more information, visit our website to submit prayer request, send a message to Prophetess, and more. Visit our prophetic school and get access to detailed e-courses by Prophetess Miranda to help you walk through your prophetic walk with God. Would you be interested in joining Prophetess Miranda in person? Explore our website to find out if she will be visiting a city near you. Prophetess Miranda's ministry is centered around three main hubs, New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as Charlotte and Chapel Hill, North Carolina. She frequently travels to various states and cities, so be sure to visit the website for updates on her upcoming visits to a city near you. I have a prophetic alert. A message to the church. Get ready to take your place in this world. Get ready to prepare God's people to truly know me, says God. God is calling leaders to get ready to war through this next season of this world. Yes, we have the victory, but we must war and obey God. Today, I'm telling you, draw nigh to God and obey him in this season. It doesn't matter what this season looks like. I know it looks like it's flipping all up and down. You don't know where you are. Things are happening, but there's a shift in this world. And as a prophetic vessel and a voice to the nation, I must warn you, leaders, get your people prepared to really know God. Because you're going to need to know his directions and his leading. Those of you that God are giving downloads about the end times and telling you things, do this, do that, please obey. Because he's setting you up for this next season of this world. And that will be the word of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. You know, there's time God wants to give a word of the Lord to the world. And we have to obey. Oh, my God, my God. All right, let's get ready for the word. Today, I will enter and you will enter with me a school of deliverance. Get your Bibles and your devices and your notes and whatever it is you're going to type your notes in because this will be a school of deliverance. I will be talking about the beast which keeps you from managing your spirit. Now those of you that walk in the prophetic and those of you that the Lord is opening up gifts to you and you're starting to understand things in the spirit this message is going to be a blessing to you. Oh, I love to teach people how to tap in for themselves. Yeah, see, it's great for you to watch me walk in gifts, but you need to walk in them because that's what's going to really prepare you as you walk through these things in life. And those of you that are in ministry and that are uh, preparing people and dealing with people in the kingdom, you must manage your spirit to really be successful. Now, 
I will be talking about the beast, which keeps you from managing your spirit. Now today, I release the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. Today, I pray that you listen for transformation. You know, you can listen for information and get information. You can listen for the sound. Sometimes people just have a nice sound and people like to hear the sound. But you can listen for intentional transformation. That means you're listening for every piece of information that you need to apply to your life. That when you leave out that door, you leave changed and delivered. See, that's the kind of intentional that I'm talking about. See, there were days that I was battling things. I did had no clue. I wasn't even battling my stuff. I was battling stuff from my mom or my dad. I didn't know anything about generational blessings nor curses. I just was walking, trying to figure out why am I struggling with stuff. But I realized that I needed to be transformed. True transformation is walking in the walking and living in the spirit. So you might say, well, prophetess, I've been filled. I know I know God. I hear his voice. Yeah, that's great. But do you walk in the spirit and do you live in the spirit? See, I had a prophetic vessel that one day and I asked, I said, how do I know if I'm walking in the spirit? Am I walking in the spirit? And she began to teach me. She said, you need to learn how to live in it. And I realized living in it was a daily thing, moment by moment. And so I realized, that, whoa, that's two different worlds. Not just hearing from God when I need a miracle. Not just hearing from God when I need certain things to happen. Oh, I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, my God, that's a different world. I need to know how to live in the spirit. Now, managing your spirit through the word is powerful. You know, the word will cause you to face your past boldly. You know, most Christians is the main thing they struggle with is their past. Even if you're soaring in the gifts, even if you know God is with you, you know he loves you, he keeps giving you miracles, he speaks to you. But you know what? That monitoring spirit brings your past back all the time. And tell you, yeah, I know you did this, but what about this? But you know, when you manage your spirit through the word of God, it's a powerful thing. Today, I'm going to share keys with you. And sometimes when I say this, it's because I want you to know how personal it is. These are things I would teach my daughter. Yeah, I'm going to teach that to you today. You know, I have sons and daughters all over this world, people that I love. Anybody ready for transformation and change? I'm in. You, ever, you won't get my attention? Oh, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what all of this. No, I don't care how big your church is. Tell me what you're walking in. Yeah, tell me what you're walking. Let me watch you when you leave home and when you're in your private space. Are you walking in? You know, sometimes we have um, inner healing retreats, and sometimes people are amazed. I said, no, sweetie, we're just, this is us. Yeah, you, this is what you got. Yeah, we, we have no, there's no secrets behind the door. Yeah, <laughs> we are who we are. We're pressing for deliverance and bringing deliverance around the world, and we condemn none. Because there ain't too much you can tell me that I even have messed up with. But oh, I thank God that I know deliverance. That's why I can bring it. So what are you bringing to, to the world? What are you called for? You know, it's bad to go before a prophet and to know you're not going to be challenged. You do know that, right? They come to challenge you to step up to the next plate. Like in here now, I can see many of you all got gifts. You don't use them. You use them only when you're in 911, when you're in emergency. But the gifts are meant to be used all the time and walking in them. But let me give um, 
Another thing about managing your spirit through the word of God is that it kills shame. Yeah, you know when that demon come back up with that word and he try to show you something from your past, you kill it with the word. So that's no shame, no guilt, and then you slam him with the blood of Jesus. That'll seal him for good. So we talked about monitoring your spirit which means discerning your behavior. So whenever I, whenever I coach my prophetic students, I tell them, I say, you have to monitor your spirit. You know, come on, mothers, think about it. You know, you're trying to, you're trying to keep your own self together. And then you got to keep your daughter and your son, the house. <laughs> you're trying to make sure they're not with the wrong people. It's a lot to monitor someone. But you have to monitor your own spirit, which means discern your behaviors. Man, you start seeing you doing some flipped out stuff, wrong desires going on. Oh, uh, you better check that because that's a sign. Closing your spirit is not to be open to every spirit like a spiritual sponge. Some of y'all... You got the love of Jesus, you'd have been delivered, you just read it, and you just receive every spirit coming. You don't discern. You know, I have a technique that we use in our prophetic school. It's called listen, discern, and then speak. You listen to a person long enough, discern their words, then you speak. You should be able to say, okay, demon, I, I, I see who you are. Or you should say, I concur, brother or sister. But you can't be open to every spirit. Sometimes people take different people in their homes. You know, and I understand you're called to the homeless ministry. Praise the Lord. So, somebody got to be called to it. But you need to be strapped for that. Because there's so many wiles of the enemy that's out here. Now, the next one we talked about was managing your spirit. Which is applying the war tools. It's in the book. The tools are in the book. Y'all know the book I'm talking about, right? All right. Applying the war tools. That's when I say manage your spirit, that means applying your gifts. Whether you strapped in the spirit, whether you praying in tongues, whether you're discerning, whether you're using spiritual gifts, whether you got the word and you, you know that word inside of you, something come up that look like a devil, you slap it back. But those are tools. You on that job, you can't manage your spirit. You flipping out, saying things you shouldn't because you're not managing your spirit. Got to use them war tools. Next one was stretching your spirit. Now, let me tell you what that is. It's building up your spiritual capacity to endure, process, and war against the enemy. Let me go back. Some people don't have a spiritual capacity to stand. You go into a fight you're not ready for. Let me give you an example. I remember going, I knew something changed. I, I said, I don't know what's going on, but this is a different fight. I knew something had taken over my home. I was like, what is going on? And I knew in the spirit, I needed to step it up. See, some of y'all going through battles. That in some battles, you know these kind of battles because they don't look like one you've dealt with before. But you're going to have to do something deeper in the spirit realm to be able to address yourself for that battle. So you have to ask God to stretch you in the spirit. Stretch your capacity. See, some of you are still dealing on lower levels. Yeah, it, it was fine. You know, when you had a little battle at work, you know, they don't like you. You know, they, they at the coffee stand, you know, at the coffee room just talking about you. That's, that's, that's um, kindergarten. But there are some battles, baby, they come in to take you out. They come in to shut your mouth if you prophetic. They're going to shut your mouth. They come in to trip you up. And you're going to have to know how to war. See, whenever you come to a level in the spirit, an enemy gets mad. So you have to prepare. And how do you build your capacity with the level of word? 
clean up your house. How many of y'all cleaned your house spiritually? Yeah, that's why those demons bouncing off the wall. Prophetess, I see, I see shadows in the walls. Prophetess, my, my, my daughter says she hears stuff at night. Prophetess, uh, somebody told, they feel like somebody was going up and down their stairs. I'm like, wait, sugar, you, hear, you got too much extra curricular going on in that house. Somebody not to take authority. But it's really real. Because, see, when you open demonic doors, those are things that come in with demonic doors. Those are foul spirits. And they will take up resident in your house. You'll start hearing things. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's another message for another time. But you stretch your spirit to build the capacity for the war that you're going in. Now, then it's detoxing your spirit. That's pulling out old toxic thoughts, habits, and learned behaviors, which are hindering your spiritual walk with God. Okay, let me break that down. Whenever you come in and you decide that you're going to be delivered and you're going to really walk for God, your old thoughts begin to rise like a flood. And they begin to bring toxic thoughts. And really what it's doing, it just won't make you think you're not saved. It won't make you question your deliverance. Or maybe you really didn't get delivered. Yeah, you got delivered. It's just coming back to check because you didn't close all the doors. Yeah, you know the seven demons, they're coming back to say, let me see if they really saved. Let me see if you left a door open. And it comes through habits and learned behaviors. See, some of you all, they're things, come on, as kids. They're behaviors, they're things, you're before Christ, that you learned. And see those behaviors? Those behaviors come up and they make you toxic. Some of you all get saved and you say, prophetess, you know, I'm changed. Okay, sweetie, but you know, you, you know, if you go, go to the book, there's a seven foundation. See, you got to study to show yourself approved. You got to clean up some other stuff. Oh, yeah, you do. And then you got to sit under somebody and go get some inner healing. Because so much stuff was before, before Christ. Come on. Lord Jesus, a walking garbage can, right? Because you didn't know. But now you're new. You're born again. But now you got to get that word in you to stay anchored and solid. Next one that we talked about is knowing your spirit. Now, this one is going to be very important. Many people do not know their own spirits. I was talking to a young woman earlier, and she said, she said, well, I think I know my spirit. I said, really? And she went on talking. She was just talking about different things in our life. And I say, nah, you don't sound like you know your spirit. I say, you think you do. I say, because if you did, you'd be able to explain why some of those behaviors are happening and you don't understand why you're doing it. You know, like you flip out and just cuss somebody out and you'd be like, well, where that came from? Like, how that got in here? All of a sudden, you just decide you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna cheat on a test, cheat on your taxes. Or you know you're at work and you know you done stole those people at work toilet paper and paper towel. You forgot God was walking with you. Because remember, you practice in the presence, right? Well, while Jesus was right there with the presence while you and the toilet paper was going to your car. What is in your spirit? It is important that you know what's in there. Whenever you enter sin, you go into compromise. Compromise brings layers of stuff. Remember my Pringle can. And you click it off them layers. But you got to know what's in you. Let me give you an example. And this is a true example. Had a daughter of the heart. She said, how in the world, after all these years, I go get a boyfriend and don't even half know him. And I know I, I know better. I said, oh, you didn't know your own spirit. You had something way down in there. I said, because you were not constantly walking in the spirit. Because when you walk in the spirit, God convicts you. He shows you what's in you. So all of a sudden, you're able to, you know, you just, I got angry, prophetess, and I just slapped my wife. You did? Oh, where that demon come from? Because you don't know what's in you. A spiritual walk is to take inventory of yourself.
Turn to your neighbor and say, this is a school of deliverance. That's why it's so quiet. But we getting ready to wreck the place. Ah, turn to your neighbor and say, we getting ready to wreck this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we are. We're going to get caught. Y'all know my favorite theme, up and out. <laughs> up and out. It's got to come up and out. Yes. Now, let's get to managing your, uh, what keeps me from managing my spirit. The prophet is, I don't understand. So there's four of them. I'm going to list them and then I'm going to walk through them. Number one is the old man. That's the carnal man and it's got no glory on it. The next one is living in a lying spirit. The next one is living in unbelief. And then the fourth one is living in a religious spirit. That is the four things that keep you from managing your spirit. Now, managing your spirit is powerful for those of you that want to walk in the, in, in the prophetic and want to experience the glory of God and experiences with God. Do you know you should really cry to go to the next place of God? You might say, well, prophetess, you know, and, and that's great. I mean, I, I love the place I'm in, but every day I cry out, God, I want more. I need more. I want to go to a deeper place, a deeper discernment, a deeper, keen, keener spirit. I want to be able to discern me deeper because the more healed I get, the greater anointing begins to flow to be able to destroy yokes. See, to know God is to draw closer to him. The closer you draw to him, his words becomes richer to you. Do you know you'll get to a point you start reading the word and it'll be so rich you feel like you and him walking through a valley together and going into a lofty, great place. You know, sometimes you go down in a valley to go on and deal with some stuff, but you come up out of that valley. You shouldn't stay in the valley all the time. But if you're walking it with Jesus, oh, there's going to be some elevation. So let's deal with number one, the old man. Now, you have to understand that the natural man is the person who is not saved. You know, his spirit's dead. He's dead based on Ephesians 2 and 1. Then there's the carnal man has an experience like a new birth. You know, he's got newborn again, but that's it. He, he, he didn't go get filled. He didn't go to the next place in God. But then they have living life in the spirit, which is setting your heart on the leading of the Holy Ghost in all areas of your life. How many of you ask the Lord about everything in your life? Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Do you know that's a mature thing to coach your spirit to remember to thank God every day in everything you do? Well, let me tell you how I learned that. See, you all might have learned it supernaturally, and God bless you. I honor you as well. But I learned it from getting butt whippings. Y'all know God gives whippings? Oh, keep walking with him. Just keep walking with him. Yeah, just keep walking. You know, he'll tell you, don't listen to him when he warned you on that job and you didn't take the first warning. And he said, okay, you didn't get it? Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm, I'm to show you. So I just learned that in every area of my life, every time I would make a mistake, I'd be like, you know what? Lord, show me. And for a solid two years, I prayed this day and night. God, show me the enemy before he strikes. Lord, show me the enemy before he strikes. Because I would always see him after. And then I go, oh, that was the devil. And then I go, oh, oh. I said, Lord, I need to see him before. And I pushed and pushed till I was able. And you know what I learned? I was just list, crying out for the prophetic. But you know, once you get the gifts, you then got to ask God to know how to use them. You know, religion tells us you use them and the church at the altar. That's it. But that's so not the truth. So whenever I would do that, I said, Lord, I don't understand. So I made a journal, my do's and don'ts. I said, uh-huh. Missed it again. Going into work. Did not cover myself with the blood. Didn't say, Lord, help me to deal with these devils today. 
So then the next one, I got whipped up by one. I'm like, okay, I got it. Yeah, they set me up. I said, oh. They said, I want you to go to a meeting. I said, oh. I didn't well, I didn't war up. So I learned to ask God about every part of my life. And sometimes when I don't hear anything, I say, I'm not doing nothing. So the key is just to thank God first. You just decree it. The next thing is living in a lion spirit. Let me teach you something about lion spirits. They are the COVID to most demonic spirits is a lying spirit. A person with a lying spirit is cunning, crafty, with spiritual de deception. They live in a web of lies and they don't, they're untruth. They take the truth and twist it to the point that they believe it themselves. A lying spirit is self-image is portrayed and created to them with false reality. They get to the place they believe the lie. And they start living in this false reality. A lying spirit is a breeding ground for literally irrational thoughts. Most time when somebody tell me they got mind battles and mind thoughts, oh, I know that the core is a lying spirit. Now, let me talk about those of you all that's called and anointed for deliverance. You better get well acquainted with a lying spirit because that is the core of most demons that touch people's lives. How does a man get tricked to marry the wrong person? Lies. Deceit. How do a, a woman, she goes to a car uh, on a car lot and she buys a car next to the car is a lemon. What happened? She was deceived. Lying spirit present themselves in one way. You take the lie and begin to live in it. A lying spirit is self-absorbed and self-centered. A lying spirit is covered with pride and self-made God. A lying spirit believes in a flawless image. Oh, yeah. A lying spirit, I'm good. How you doing? I'm good. No, you're not. No. No, you're not. It wants you to believe that you're perfect and everything is good. Do you know how many people suffer sicknesses and live in depression? And sometimes you'll find out. I didn't know Cheryl was going through all of that because she lived in an image like she was well. See, when a lying spirit come in, it makes you so prideful. I'm not telling people my business. Okay, you need to tell somebody. Some, you need to go find pastor first. You need to find somebody. Oh, you need to get you an intercessor. A person with a lying spirit cannot speak truth. The words they speak appear to be truth. But the root of it is a lie. Now, see when a person goes into deep delusion? Let me give you an example. That's a person that just decide that, okay, that house is mine. I didn't go to no closing. I didn't buy it, but I just believe it's mine. Mm -hmm. And they delude themselves to believe it. Now let's pull it in the spirit realm. There are times that people have a, you have not paid the price to walk in deliverance, yet you think you're a deliverance minister. Well, you know what happened to the sons of Stevia, right? Yeah, they thought they, were, they thought they could sling the name of Jesus as well. Those of you that are dealing with demonic spirits, I promise you, find the lie. You struggling with something? What voice whispered to you and told you, oh, well, maybe you're not a man, you're a woman. A lying spirit. Do you know a lying spirit will convince you to, to believe it? And next thing you know, if you do, you start walking in it. A lying spirit is merely words that's fabricated by demons that are influenced to kill the intent and glory on your life. Now, let me say that one one more time. A lying spirit is words that is fabricated by demons influence with the intent to kill the glory some of y'all think well prophetess i have accepted that i'm anointed of god and i'm gonna go into ministry get ready sweetie do you know when i was being ordained lord have mercy when i was being ordained the enemy was going after all of my kids every one of them at one time mm -hmm. i have seasons in life see it's bad, 
to think that's not a cost. There's a cost for every great walk. You might say, well, profit is, you know, I thought I was doing a good thing. And you are. But there's a cost for it. And it's dangerous to walk with people who don't know the cost. Here you sacrifice anything, then you walk in with somebody, don't have a clue what the cost is. But sometimes I think people don't really understand what it is to really be Christ-like and a Christian. I don't think they know what that means. They think it's just some lofty life, you know, over some people with a big church. That is nowhere near it. We are in a war. And people need our help. Do you know we're supposed to compel people to come to Christ? We the salt of the earth. We're supposed to make the difference. The church. You are part of the church. Do you know every one of y'all, all y'all ministries, is supposed to be for the one cause. Not fighting against everybody whose ministry is bigger. No. You got one demon and that demon is all trying to, got all his little imps strategizing see there's some people in here you might say well prophetess i didn't know this was the battle yes oh no baby it's not a, it's not just after your home it wants the call on your life do you know every one of you all represent hundreds of thousands of people that will be changed because of your life so do you know the enemy's job is to get you to change your life oh no you don't need to do that you don't need to do that. Some of my greatest times that the Lord would move mighty and minister. You know what the enemy would tell me? You shouldn't go. Shut church down. You shouldn't go. Nobody ain't going to get delivered. I say the blood is against you. I'm getting delivered if nobody else getting delivered. I'm, I'm enough. Okay, I need help. I'm going to get delivered. So I'm telling you, some of you all are wondering where these battles are coming from. It's because of the call. It's a good thing. It's actually a sign that the Lord God got his hand on you. That is one of the signs. Now, a second here. This lion spirit is going to be important for you to walk in freedom. Now, a lion spirit is deceptive and it's embedded with false, a false spirit. A lying spirit is merely words that the enemy place sometime even in your heart or your own ears to fight you. Now, how does a lying spirit move? Let me give you uh, a f maybe a few ways to show you how it moves. A lying spirit cannot understand truth based on John 8 and 43. A lying spirit denies the deity of Jesus Christ. He denies that he is God. That's 1 John 2 and 22. The lying spirit stands with literally the majority opinion, even if it's contrary to God's word. Yeah, you, you know, you're going to go ahead and go with the crowd. A lying spirit doesn't listen to believers. It don't want to hear truth. A lying spirit's words that fail to come to pass. You know, people, you know, oh, I believe you're going to do this. You know, Ahab had 400 prophets. And he just thought the majority was going to rule. But it wasn't God. Some of y'all waiting for answers and never say, yeah, girl, go on. yeah, that's your husband. Yeah, baby, do th what? You better seek the very presence of of God and refuse to move until the true spirit reigns. But you got to have a true spirit in you because the lie can come and cause you to form a, a fantasy only because it's pulling on your desires. This is the reason why you make decisions based on the word of God. One lady was saying, she said, well, prophet, she said, sometimes I just really don't know. I said, wait, if you struggling, there's another spirit in you. I said, because the spirit of God is peace. I said, you read that word. I, she said, well, I don't know who's right. I said, the word is right. Get the word. You follow the word. Now, how does you, do you keep your spirit um, managed? Living in unbelief. Now, unbelief, this is a treacherous antichrist spirit. This come to make you so discouraged. You want to just give up. And then you begin to question, 
well, am I saved? Do I really know God? You'll know when a person, when I'm, I'm dealing with deliverance and I'm talking to someone, I listen for those words. And I know that the spirit of unbelief is there. Because they begin to say, well, maybe I wasn't saved. Maybe I didn't do this. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe God, you know, maybe I miss. I'm like, wait, what? I said, now you're questioning him? Unbelief is refusing to believe God in his word. Unbelief is a, is a lack of faith. See, it's fine if you can go ahead on and believe when you walk in with me. But what about when you're walking by yourself? You know, there was a time that I had several ment mentors. But guess what? I, it came a time I had to believe for myself. I had to know God. That's the same God that delivered my children. The same God that delivered me was going to still be there. Now, let me read this scripture. It's Mark 9 and 24. And it says, I do believe... Help me overcome the unbelief. And once one version says, Lord, help my unbelief. So you have to think about it. This man, this cry for this man came when he was heartbroken over his son. You know, when you manage in your spirit, you know, you got to make sure. Because see, when you're in a war zone, getting ready to cross over to a great season in your life. That devil will come messing with your children. This man was so heartbroken about his son. He said, help my unbelief. I, I, I want to believe. Just help my unbelief. You know, there are times this ministry was birthed on me crying out for my children. So what are you crying out for? What made you make that turn? You might say, well, prophetess, you know, I, I don't know. I think I need, I, I, I think I need something else. no. You just need to go deeper. Turn to your neighbor and say, no, the answer is going deeper. Oh, that's the answer. Lord, take me deeper. I got to go deeper, Lord. Deeper where? Deeper into his spirit, deeper into his walk. The next one is going to be the religious spirit. This is the beast. Let me deal with that beast. Now, the religious spirit, let's go to 2 Timothy 3 and 7. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Bible. And it says, always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning and never coming to the truth. This is what religious people do. They're always in their Bible. They always challenge somebody. But guess what? They never come to truth. You know, I was listening to a, a, a great man of God, um, very controversial, but he's passed on. And he said, you know, it was the religious people that killed Jesus. You know, religious people fight over the cause, burn the church down, and then nobody have church to go to. But they're going to have a meeting and fight everybody because they're religious. A religious person forgets the love of God. So I've got some signs to be able to help you to know if you are religious. Now, a religious spirit is a type of demon spirit that influences a person and a group. To place, literally, they don't want you to go into intimacy with God. Where you really know God. Doesn't want you to do that. See, a religious spirit say, no, you just pray two times a day and you're good. Oh, But today we're going to break the back of religion. Do you know when religion is moved out of you, do you know glory comes in? Do you know your gifts will be activated? Let me give you a, a common example. All right? You know you have gifts on the inside of you. Oh, girl, I can't say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. Because they're not going to accept it. Now here this person could die tomorrow or get in trouble. And here you got to get, but you're not going to say it. And you know why? Because the religious people say, oh, don't say nothing. Girl, they're not going to receive you. So you have to be really, really careful, right? It doesn't want you to touch God. Some of you all gifts are going to get ready to get activated in here. And the enemy is not going to be able to trump you up anymore. Now. When people operated in a 
religious spirit. They try to earn their salvation. But let's talk about the beast today, the religious spirit. So the religious spirit is a beast. You might say, well, prophet, I don't know, you know, um, you know, perversion is a heavy hitter. Yeah, but this religious thing is a beast. Let me tell you why. It make you partner with lust, pride, and delusion without even knowing you did it. Because it tells you your puffed up in pride mean I'm the chairman, I'm the this, or I'm the captain, I'm the president, whatever. You forget the intimacy. It makes you hurt people for a religious cause. You're going to fight every, they trying to help you because you can't be in control. You shut the whole program down so none of the children get help because you mad at the person that's over it. Religious. It makes you forget the love and mercy and righteousness of God. So you might say, prophet, is the people really do that? Yeah, they do that in spirit-filled churches. They're mad because an anointing is on someone. Why do you think worshipers have such an issue? That religious thing come after it. So there's no unity. We all go. <sighs> so what happened? No glory. None. Here there's some people crying out for miracles. Need to be touched. Need a financial miracle. Need God to do a new thing in them. But guess what? The religious spirit is so busy fighting. The glory could come through the worship. And they hold it down. My, my, my. It may, a, a religious spirit will make you feel uh, spiritually entitled for years of service regardless to your lack of spiritual growth. I've been in God for 20 years, baby, so I need to be the one that leads the worship. But you're not growing. You have no anointing upon you. I remember one lady told me, she said, well, I want to do what you do. I said, God bless you, lady. Are you willing to pay the price? You don't have a clue. Not a clue. It makes you live in sin trying to fulfill a holy call. Oh, yeah. A religious spirit will tell you, oh, you okay. You good. It makes you pass your perverted spirit on to others and think it's okay. Mm -hmm. It makes you believe parts of the word of God. See, this religious spirit is a beast. Do you hear me? I had a lady, a mother, who was teaching her child that she didn't need too much God. Because she was going to be sorry she didn't go out and have fun. I'm like, oh my God. I said, wait, sweetie. And the mother said, yes. Because she needs to. I said, oh my Lord. I said, so you told her that? She said, yeah, she said, I just don't want her to have too much God. I said, Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God, I start to shine down on the inside. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, get this religious thing off the phone with me. I'm like, wait, you told her this? Lord, have mercy. Okay. A religious spirit will make you believe only parts of the word. So if you only believe certain parts, you can't go into glory. You can't go into fresh anointings. You will not go into miracle signs and wonders because you don't believe every part of it. It makes you feel that you're right even when you're wrong. It makes you feel like church is enough. Oh, I don't need the intimacy with God. I don't need all that. I went to church on Sunday. I went to Bible study. I'm good. I paid my tithes. A religious spirit makes you think that's enough. It makes you fight those that walk in holiness. It makes you um, come to a place where you, it kills your destiny upon a person's life. Literally, a religious spirit tells you, you don't need all of that. You need that and more. Let me give you an example. See this lady? One, two, three. Stand. Mm-hmm. Stand. Me here and the horn de ho. Stand with the hat on, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just take these three people. Just these three. Just these three. Religious spirits say you can get in the line of the little traditional just because it was the what you learned from years to come. 
and never access the glory. All you have to do is believe it. But I tell you, there's more. Don't measure yourself by nobody. Do you understand? There's a set anointing for you. The things you went through, those things will become your ministry. Don't run from those people because they're going to find you. They'll find you even in the ladies' room. You understand? They will, but you know what? There's a price for it. You're paying the price now. You're set apart. They're not going to like you. You need to be set apart for where God's going to take you. They're not going to understand you. But the religious people say, girl, get that degree. You good. Get that job and that business. And you good. Get in your millionaire house. Marry the right man. And you good. But the Lord God say there's more for you. And there's an anointing for people that are wounded. And abused people is your portion. But you don't settle. You don't settle because religion says you got enough. What you need all of that for. But I'm telling you today there is more. You can be seated. You're called as a pace setter. You're going to cause trouble wherever you are. Yeah, they're not going to like what you say. You're going to stir it up. You're going to try to figure out what is the problem. That is a part because they see the anointing and the glory on you. That's because you have eyes to see. So they can't hide from you. You know when deceit is there. You know when stuff is going on wrong. And you're bold enough to be able to speak it. See, religious people are not going to like you. It's a part of the price. But the Lord said to tell you there's more. You can be seated. Now, what about you? Come on, what about you? God has you called for something. Religion is self-deceiving. It calls a person to never change. It tells a person, I'm good. I'm okay. It comes to steal years. Now, listen to me, and I want you to be careful. When you walk in a religious spirit, it steals years of your life. Years. And I know once or two people, I mean, not recent, this last year, this one lady was like, all these years, oh my God. But you know, I believe the Lord can give you recompense and can accelerate the years and give you the years back. Maybe some of you might say, well, prophetess, I missed my season. Catch it in somebody else's season. Yeah. Do you know how to best catch up a season? Serve. Do you know when you serve, you're moving with the person, but you're learning while you're serving? Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed it. I gave you the key. How do you learn? You learn while you serve. Elisha and Elisha. He served. Inconspicuous. People just see this little man just file another one. Don't look like he come into nothing. Is everything okay? Okay. All right. He just following, following him. But guess what? Ooh, there was a day of graduation, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. There was a day of graduation. When you serve, let's just use in a household. You're cooking. You're setting the table. You get the first whiff of the food. You get to serve the food. You get, you get all the drippings. You get everything, right? You get to taste the food even before everybody else. Oh, my God. But when you serve, you know how to prepare. If you help someone preparing. Elijah knew what to do because he served well. Some of you, are you serving well? And do you know when you serve, it falls on you? Oh, somebody missed the drop. When you serve well, the anointing drops on you. Let me give you an example. Those of you that have ever watched um, my videos of making of a prophetess, I had no clue about transferred anointings. I had no clue about serving. I had nothing. I, my family just love to serve. Even when sometimes when I'm in my private retreats with my clients, they're like, you're going to serve? I'm like, yes. 
I said, you know, Jesus said the son of man came not to be. Y'all got that scripture? And they're looking at me like, you going, I'm like, yes, absolutely. And they looking at me cross-eyed like, okay, what's going on with her? But you know what? Serving is the key. You want to get rid of demons? Serve in the anointing. Serve in it. Sometimes some people get healed just from being around it. Because sometimes you learn what to do, what not to do. You, when that glory anointing begins to fall, you're there. We've learned so much being on the road. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. God has great anointings for you. Lift up your head. It's going to happen for you. But serving is the key. A religious spirit will steal years from you. It loves to steal the glory years. So in other words, see all those years you, should, you were serving and serving, and then you might be like, well, prophetess, I just didn't understand, you know, and then you just say, well, fine, I'm going to do my own thing. So you just go back in the world because you were approaching the glory season. The glory season is when God then takes the anointing and put it up on you. Don't miss your glorious season. Don't. A religious spirit will make you stay stagnated. See, other people, they were going to conferences, reading books, studying the word, taking classes, getting online, doing, you know, studying. Why? Because they were preparing for the glory seasons. There is a glory season. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got a glory season. You have a glory season. You do have one. Oh, yeah, you do. The religious spirit will hide in you while you serve in the kingdom. Now, that's a tricker. While you in the church, a religious spirit will hide in you and make you don't grow. And then you're sitting there wondering, wait a minute, how come everybody else is growing? Because a religious spirit say, just show up at 7 o'clock on time, say they only till 9 Donate something to the kids and send past a love offering. I'm done. My duties is done. The rest of the time I, it's me. I live how I want to live. See, that's that religious demon. And you wait and then your age, you age right on out of the anointing. My God. Then when you wake up and you're 50 years old trying to figure out what do I do now? Y'all listen to that making of a prophetess. I'm telling you. A religious spirit can mislead people and bring them into sin. I remember a minister came and asked me to sit with him. And he said, I'm struggling with alcohol. And I said, I said well, where this came from? I said, come out your legacy, your family. He said, nope. He said, my pastor taught me how to, how to drink. I said, really? He said, yep. Yeah. He said, but this got to go because I don't want it to steal my life. He said, and I'm getting to the point that I can't see. You need to break that soul tie. Pastor's going on, but you need to break that soul tie. What else did you have in agreement? And we did a chart. He got them, did them discipline charts, and we start going through the charts. But it turns out it was religious people that brought him into the addiction. A religious pe person can lead people into sin. They'll mislead them. Because see, you're religious. You don't think it take all of that. Oh, you just, you just got grace. Y'all know this grace stuff, right? Yeah, you just got grace. Oh, just put it under grace. Okay, okay. A religious person can destroy a church in the name of the Lord. A religious person can stop the power of God from moving in a church. Oh, the music too loud. Oh, oh they worship too long. Oh, I can't stay if church past one hour. I got to go. Kill the anointing. The glory is ready to settle in the place. People don't come to be healed and they're watching the clock. A religious person 
can make you think they're righteous, although they're acting like a sinner. All right, this is signs if you, are a re you have a religious spirit. A religious spirit judges people. They judge all their appearance. They watch people's clothes, and they determine their spirituality by their clothes or their money. A religious spirit try to earn God's love and salvation. A religious spirit try to conform to an outward holiness, but within they are not transformed. A religious spirit always is critical to other people and not by walking with God. A religious spirit performs God's work based on their recognition and their title. Do you know God don't give, don't, God don't give a nothing about no type of title. All he wants you to have a banner is, send me, Lord, I'll go. Why don't y'all lift your hands and say, send me, Lord, I'll go. Oh, you better know what you're turning up here. Say it again. Say it again. Oh, one more time. Come on, loud. Woo, do you hear this in here? Oh, I love people. Let me hear you say that. Girl, I am not convinced. <laughs> you lost my vote. <laughs> say it for me one more time. Oh, come on. Let me hear it with some anointing up on there. Y'all heard her right. All right. All right. All right. A religious spirit never experienced a passion or the hunger of God. Oh, do you know what that's like? They don't know what Holy Ghost drops are. They don't know what fire in their belly is. Anybody ever had fire in your belly? You ever had the hand of the Lord to just touch you? You ever laid on the floor and could not get up? Face to the floor, the floor wet, you done cried and cried. See, but a religious person, don't un they don't know that. They've never experienced the passion nor the hunger of God. A religious spirit desires position and honor in a church more than honoring God. A religious spirit identifies its root in life literally by my title in church. So what happened? What happened if COVID come again and you don't have no church? What you gonna do with your title then? Who cares about your title? Ain't nobody to care about it. A religious spirit knows the truth of Jesus, but not the way of Jesus. Yeah, they know what the word. Oh, they'll tell you, scriptures say, but they don't live it. A religious spirit look righteous, but inwardly they're filled with anger and resentment. Oh, my God. Let me give you a foundation, and I want you all to take notes, on why do you need to manage your spirit? Because you want to, if number one, to experience the glory of God. When you manage your spirit, you able to make sure you don't talk to people wrong. You make sure you forget to, you love on God every day. You know, it takes the, take God to literally remind you to say, did you ask me about that? Did I say you could go there? Did I say it's time to buy that? Oh, oh you said, oh, well, you know, can, I loan, can you loan me some money? Did you ask God? Can I co-sign? Did God tell you to do that? According to the word, you can't. Uh-huh. I want to access power and authority. See, if you don't manage your spirit, the, you will not have authority. When you pray, it will, you will not move nothing. Why do you need to manage your spirit? Because you want to hear and be led by the Holy Spirit. If you don't manage your spirit, you're going to let people make you angry. And that bitterness is going to cut you off from God. Do you know when a person has bitterness in them, they can't hear God. Bitterness makes your bones rot. You ache and you hurt, so you whine and complain all the time. And little do you know, you stay outside. Outside of the glory realm. Why do I need to manage my spirit? Because I want to continually grow in God and be used by him. I want to manage my spirit because I want authority over the spirit of carnality. See, when you manage your spirit and say, well, girl, you're going to come to the, to the birthday party. Or, girl, you're going to do this. And then you know they got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. 
right? See, but if you manage your spirit, man, you'll hear from God. Now, let all of that negative stuff get in there. Let all that stuff just pile in. You're not managing your spirit. Therefore, you can't hear him. You make wrong decisions. You move off a job before time. You, you buy something before time. You don't hear when the Lord says, go here. This one needs you. You miss it. So therefore, there's no obedience. You want to manage your spirit because you don't want to live in a religious spirit because then you will not flow. You don't want to be ever learning but never coming to the truth. Now, what do you do with what you see manifesting in your spirit? Y'all ready? Do you know that's the number one question that I'm asked? Prophetess, what I do with what I see? Sometimes people will ask me, can you help me to be able to pray in the spirit and be able to see? And I said, sure. But what you going to do with what you see? Not in others, but in you. All right. I hope y'all like me after this. So first, you're going to identify and acknowledge that you have something that is there that's outside the will of God. Come on. You blasting off at people. You going off on people. You know, all kind of things happen. And you're like, why did I do that? Anybody in here ever get to that place? Yeah. You're watching yourself and you're like, okay, what's going on? So you, and once you identify and acknowledge that you have something, that's the beginning. Then you're going to turn your heart towards God and you will hear from him. A bitter and an angry person, they're not going to turn their heart towards God. You know why? They like feeling mad. They like being painful, having the pain of what someone did and telling them. So a bitter person just tells everybody what every church did over and over and over again. But little do they know they are rottening their bones while they do that. So if you, and then you'll find yourself manifesting in anger, in hate. You'll wonder why the spirit of the Lord don't. And one, one pastor told me, he said, please help me to hear. I said, well, let's talk about why you're not hearing. What is the deal that you're not hearing? Why? I said, what's down in your spirit? I said, come on. I said, we're going to ask the Lord to shine a light and show me what's in here. You really want to know God? You want to move to the next place? Ask the Lord. Say, God, let your glory come in here and show me what is in here that's displeasing to you. I promise you, your spiritual walk will go to another level. And see, sometimes you might think, well, prophet is, you know, isn't that bad? Because I got all this stuff. No, it's actually a sign that the Lord loves you and he's fellowshipping with you and telling you what's in there. Mm -hmm. Discern when it started. Now, this is how we start tracking. You're saying, prophet is, you know, I see so much stuff. I just don't understand. Don't allow things to stay in your spirit too long. Deal with them that day. I give it 24 hours. I'll battle. I said, okay, is this the enemy? Is this God? What, what, you know, what, what's going on, Miranda? Where did this come from? 24 hours. I sit, I'll sit down, sit quiet, allow my spirit. Sometimes the Lord has somebody to call, and they'll talk, and they'll talk about it. And I'll be, oh, the Lord wanted me to, to talk to them about it. Sometimes he's saying, no, that's for you, Miranda. He'll give me a confirmation in the word. Sometimes he'll say up and out. It got to come out. So I will start tracking, where did I get this from? I was talking about talking to this one. Where did I pick this up? How did I let this take rule in my spirit? Some of y'all all of a sudden picking up some type of profanity. Baby, you done transferred that somewhere or it was down in there from the legacy. Now pick which one and go after it. You don't just wake up and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you done plop into a deep sin. No, you were seduced in and now you got to figure out where that come from. 
was everybody in my family in that? And you know, you got to watch them generational stuff. Because you know those demons grow old with you, right? Oh, y'all think just because you were saved for seven years walking in power, you think they don't grow? Check your legacy. Go check deep down. Two times I remember telling one lady, I said, I don't know what this is. I said, but the Lord said for you to go check your, your generation. And I gave her the choice. I said, you need to check in your legacy. I said, there's some things in there that's struggling, that you're struggling with. That's not your stuff. It's your legacy stuff. You got to know where it started from. If it's something you just picked up, you got some new friends at work. Well, prophets, we just have coffee together. Okay, well, now you're picking up something. So what does that mean? Two can't walk together unless they agree. So what, you're agreeing with their demons? So now their demons walking through you? Now you using slang like they use slang? Now you got a profanity spirit? Or all of a sudden now, you got a night demon visiting your house, baby. Check your company. If you and I walk in together, what, tell me what, what you're going to give me. And what I'm going to give you. How you going to know that? Tell me what's in your spirit. You got something hidden down there that we don't know? That means you don't have intimacy with God because God will show you what's in your spirit. How many of you fast and pray? On your fast, do you never see the Lord never take you deep down in you? I don't know what kind of fast y'all going. Y'all must be going on them hamburger fasts. <laughs> I remember one time. <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm not going to talk about Mr. Tyler today. I am not going to do that. Nope. Mm -mm. But anyway, there was this lady <laughs> that went to this church. And I said, well, y'all, they were on a fast. I said, well, oh, that's great. I said, what kind of fast? Oh, and the first lady was eating pig potato chips. I said, she said, yeah, she said, oh, you can eat potato chips and soft drink. I was like, no, ma'am. You ain't touching Jesus and nobody else. No. During your time of fasting, and you might say, well, prophetess, do I fast for a miracle? No. But you fast to position yourself to hear God. You fast to draw closer so you could do like Hezekiah and turn yourself to the wall and the Lord God will speak to you. Do you know sometimes I'll, I'll fast and walk to us and say, I don't like this. See, y'all can go 7, 12 days or whatever. Mm -mm. I said, I don't like this. I don't know what it is. I don't know where it come from, but Lord, take it out. So if he don't answer, I just keep walking the first. I said, Lord, I'm not leaving. I'm like Jacob. I ain't going to you. Bless me. Because this can't stay here. And all I do is just settle myself down, sit in my God chair, and begin to just love on him. And sure enough, he gave me a, I said, oh, that's where I got this from. Sometimes I'll hear the person's voice. I say, oh, that's where that spirit transferred from. So you might say, well, prophet, is why do you pick up stuff? Love make you pick up stuff. Lack of prayer, emotions. Come on, you know your children. They tell you stuff, oh, mama's baby. Well, mama's baby got some demons in them. What they got in them? You know Aunt Lula Bell. You know everybody love Aunt Lula Bell. Because Aunt Lula Bell got sweet potato pies that are the bomb, right? But ain't Lula Bell got stuff in her. And then you sitting there eating at her table. You ain't bound nothing. You didn't pray for you walked in the door. So now while you just eating her food, you just picking up all her stuff. What you walking in, where did it come from? Is it yours? If it's not yours, get rid of it. Listen to me. It's going to hold down the anointing. You don't manage your spirit, you have pockets. <clears throat> Let me say this. See, when you don't manage your spirit, you have pockets of stuff that stay. I have clients that will not go maybe every other month and do a private retreat. And you know what? You know what? And, and, and she really don't know how much I, I honor her for it. And sometimes I would change my schedule and everything. You know why? Because she was digging in her. Can you imagine three days just talking about nothing but her? Get it out. I need to know what it is. I don't want to be like this. Why am I like, what is this? Do you know there are times you got to set before somebody who's going to give you truth? 
Sometimes you can't see yourself, Miss Pride. You can't see yourself. I'm good. No, you not. You smell in the spirit. You don't even have a sweet aroma. Your aroma ain't even sweet. Why it's not sweet? Because your spirit got stuff in there. Well, prophetess, I fasted and I prayed last week. But what about last month, that stuff you didn't repent for? You sat at that gossip table and just literally murdered people. And then you won't know why God, prophetess, I want the Lord to anoint me. Why? Tell me why. What kind of aroma you got? If I came to your house, what kind of spirit would be in the house? What's flowing in there? You know, demons bring dirt. Did y'all know that? Oh, demons will come in the house and you can't clean it. You clean it and it come right back. I believe this hoarding spirit's got something connected to demons. People can't even live in it. Hoarding. Demon of depression. So if you manage your spirit, you don't let stuff stay in there all the time. You choose to forgive. You choose to let go. You choose to. I choose to let go. Why? I believe that the anointing is more important. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. They used to always ask me, my, my prophetess, how you just let them just do this stuff? I said, let me say this. Nothing is worth the anointing. Oh, my God, it's precious. If I don't have the anointing, what am I going to do? How am I going to hear God? They are not worth the anointing. Who dealing with unforgiveness in here? Stan. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I asked that. Who asked that, right? Let me say this to you. They're not worth the anointing upon your life. They're not worth it. Now, I'm going to tell you what I did. I had this lady one time treating me like nothing. And I was part of the service just like everybody else. Oh, my God. She married a preacher and she j I was like, not good enough. Oh, and it tore my heart up. To the point I couldn't sleep for like six days. It was just on me and on me. I was like, what is this? It's because I loved her and I really trusted her. Baby, I pray for seven days straight. Blessings upon her. By the third day, there was Shonda Makonde. I was losing blessings. I was praying for her husband's business. He got his car dealership. I was, I mean, we was, I was just relieved. You know what? I forgot I was angry at him. And then I got my house. Nah, what you think of that? They're not worth it. They're not worth it. You put your spirit in a place. Do not let nobody get in this inner part. It's between you and God. See these married people in here? Let me say this to you. Don't you let nobody. You know when you and God are supposed to be single in spirit. Not your wife, not your husband, not your children are supposed to get in there. That's, see that intimacy? That's between you and God. Well, prophet is what am I do with my husband not happy? Pray for him. Bless your sugar. Have a wonderful day. Go the other way and go intercede for him. But you keep that Jesus thing right here. So guess what? While you let them keep all that anger in your heart, you pause in destiny. You won't hear God to the full capacity. The gifts won't come to the full capacity. So most times you're going to make wrong decisions. That's a word of wisdom. You can be seated. All right, y'all people, y'all got it. Now we can go after this stuff. We letting go today, right? You know, we should have a letting go party in here. <laughs> oh, it's time to let these people go. They're not worth the anointing. So you discern where it started. You discern when it started, where were you, what, what it was about, how did you let it in? Did you, was it was a conversation. Did you just become friends with the wrong person? You know how men on the job, they just meet somebody and next thing you know, they friends. And, you know, next thing you know, they got stuff in them. And you'll you be able to say, oh, who are your friend? You changing. That's the way transference happen. How... 
does what I have in my spirit affect other people around you? This is why you got to manage your spirit. See, some of y'all think, oh, that's just me. No, it's not. Because if you a husband and you head over that home, baby, you head over that home. Your spirit jacked up, everybody jacked up. Why? Because you rule. God made it that way. You head. That's why it's important for the head to stay straight. One lady asked me, she said, well, what am I going to do if sometimes my, my husband's head, but his head be, be crooked? I said, well, you better pray it straight. <laughs> she said, well, wait, you mean, I, I say, yes, ma'am, pray it straight. She said, you serious? I said, I sure am. Yeah, that's your home, your family. What you going to do? I said, you better get there and walk. You have a book. Walk. <laughs> So how does what's in my spirit? So now you done figured out, okay, I got some stuff going on in here. Now I need to figure out, Lord, why, how my stuff going to affect people around me? Sound comical, but this is really serious. Do you know you can be so influential in a church that you could literally cause the church to go down? Yes. See, leaders, y'all better be very careful. Because what you're wearing can drop on people. Pastor don't get to see and talk to everybody. But you could pass your spirit right on to everybody else. So let's talk about how your stuff affects other people if you don't manage your spirit. One, lack of knowledge to what is really, what really walking with God in it. See, if you lack knowledge of how to really walk with God and what that is, if not, you're going to pass it on to other people. Undecided in your heart about God. You know, some people, well, you know, I believe so. I don't know if I believe all of that. Do you know you can pass that on to other people? And now they're starting to believe, well, maybe not. Maybe I really believe God. Because that's your stuff. Experiencing God's mercy and taking it for granted. How many times y'all got miracles and the next week you didn't even go to church? You stopped the 5 a.m. prayer. You stopped the 10 a.m. prayer. Okay, God, I love you. Till you need him again. So you get all these great experiences. They'll come and testify about the miracles. But they won't do the sacrificial prayer. Lack of privacy and lack of, of intimacy with God. Mm. And knowing his power. Living in a life being led by emotions. So your emotions go on other people. You buy stuff at wrong time. And I know I say that a lot, but I don't think you understand. Emotions can lead people into things that leads them out of the glory. It's that important. If you manage your spirit, and you notice I said banish. So you might say, well, prophet is... Aren't when I'm filled, you know, I'm in God. Yes, but God give us tools. He said, you got to watch who you walk with. Two can't walk together unless they agree. You got to know there are tools and things in the word of God that we have to abide. Because if not, you get shipwrecked. Not truly giving up your will. So let's just say you're dealing with somebody who they're kind of half with the will. You can't marry somebody like that because if not, you're going to start struggling. What is the real will? Lord, what do I do? So next thing you know, either you're going to get on their side or they're going to get on your side. When a person hasn't given up their will, they're carnal, they're fleshly, they don't hear God. They have times that gifts will flow in them, but they don't hear God. They think they do. The voices are mixed up because their will is not totally given up. That's the reason why that scripture is so powerful when it talks about who you walk with. Two can't walk together unless they agree. So if she believes something else or if he believes something else. So my question to you is what do you believe? Do you believe the Lord can pull you out? 
Do you believe he can take you into lofty places to experience God? Do you believe that God can give you the gift of interpreting of tongues and prophetic worship and that the Lord can send a miracle out of nowhere because he hears the cries of you? It's what do you believe? Like kind is powerful. You stay with like kind and then you can walk in those special places. Do you know that's just not for prophets? That's not just for pastors. No. That's for the body of Christ. But there's a cost for it. Now, when you don't truly give up your will, there's a hidden carnality there. They can hide it a little while, but it'll surface. Go on a vacation with them. They're going to show you who they are. Uh-huh. I went on a church vacation one time with this church. No more church vacations. Boy, that pastor was flipping out. He was telling first, I was like, oh my God, what are they doing? They were gambling, they were doing something. He was raising habit. He must have preached on that vacation for four weeks after. Four weeks after. He said, what, what is this? And I said, well, you know, you learn them on the vacation. I kept trying to prepare him. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was a shocking. Let me say this. You're Christian, but you're not Christ-like. Too carnal. Your carnal stuff will go on other people. Do you know it wounds babies that really believe that you done prayed for them, spoke a word in their life, but then they see you down the street maybe three, six weeks later, and you done forgot that that's the one? And now those people leave church and don't want to come back to church at all. No church. Not practicing the presence of God. You practice the presence of God, you will change. Religious minded, half God, you know, I'm just half saved. Something other than God has taken residence and is hiding in you. Let me talk about that for a bit. Do you know demons hide in the body? Did y'all know that? They do. They do. They hide in the body. That's why when you see deliverance, and you'll see that there are times that demonic spirits come out. You see them throwing themselves. You know that scripture? Yeah. You know, Jesus healed the man, and they, the people, now this is crazy. They was around him while he was crazy, but then when he got delivered, they were scared of him. What we do with that? So I say to you, what is taking up resonance in you? Why are you walking out your character? Why are you doing things you can't explain? Come on. So I have this, <laughs> I have this friend. She said, I said, well, what you do when you get angry? She said, well, I have, I have this whole conversation. I said, with the person? And she said, no. She said, I just, I get in my house and I have a full argument. I said, hold up, what? I said, I'm coming to your house. It's time for deliverance. I said, you having a whole argument with somebody else? I said, that's a spirit of anger and bitterness. She said, well, I don't tell the person. I said, yeah, but you got it all inside of you. Prophetic wisdom for managing your spirit. It will give you the ability to stay connected if you can manage your spirit. Managing your spirit just means checking in your spirit all the time. It will loose the spirit of pride. Pride will not be able to rule. Do you know if both people manage their spirit in a household, you know there will never be any arguments? Because God will be in the midst of them, the both of them be managing their spirit. Do you know if you manage your spirit, the Lord will tell you what your wife needs? Isn't that right, man of God? <laughs> oh, yeah. See, when you manage your spirit, yeah, he'll be able to tell you she's hurting. She needs your love today. Yeah. Oh, she need pillow talk. Right, man of God? <laughs> he going to get me. I heard him say, oh, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. <laughs> yeah, you know the spirit, when you manage your spirit, the Lord will begin to tell you so much. The ability to stretch your spirit, that means you could take it. You have the capacity to fight. 
Because you do know with this warfare, sometimes you get tired. And if God don't stretch your spirit, you will want to just say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. It's too much. But you can't fight because there's glory on the other side. Yes. Ability to pull on God for help. Do you know when you manage your spirit, you'll be able to know how to touch the heavens and pull for help when them demonic voices talking. Stretch your mind. Your mind will be able to think at an accelerated rate. That means the Lord will begin to tell you things that are to come and fall in advance. It'll kill the fear of living in yesterday. When you manage your spirit, you'll be able to detect immediately uh -uh, that fear coming up. You'll be able to go to war. Slow your spirit. Get them scriptures and go to war. Cause you to depend upon him moment by moment. Now, let me tell you a key. That, number six, has saved my life. Because moment by moment, I pull on him. Moment by moment. See, some of y'all think just because you're saved, that demon of perversion not going to try to come back and make you watch porn. Or that demon of perversion not going to make you try to trip up and believe you're not happy while you're at home. See, but you have to understand, it's after the call. Turn to everybody. Everybody turn to somebody and say, don't you know it's after the call? Don't you know it's after the call? It wants the precious anointing. It wants the precious anointing. It's time to fight. It's Ooh, I like that. Ooh, I need a rasha. Manage your spirit and conquer the enemy. You have to, don't be scared of what God show you. Who in here can tell me something the Lord showed Jim in their spirit and then I'll tell you what to do with it? Come on, we're going to have an interactive Q&A here today. I'm on a mission. Okay. Somebody left. Everybody get mics. Get on each end. Thank you. Straight to the back, the lady with green. <gasps> Are you in incognito with your new glasses? <laughs> Making sure that, you know, when I give my word, that I hold fast to that word. And um, just different areas where I'm being a little too loose and I need to tighten it up. All right. So my instructions to you is to, one, find out what was the core of that. Where did it come from? Was it handed down? Is it something you picked up? Is it you worked with somebody and then you, you picked up that looseness from them. You want to know where it came from. Because if you don't find out where it come from, another spirit, in the, another person, same spirit, will show up again and bring you around the loop again. Know this. Go after the core of it. Ask the Lord to pluck it out. Say, now God, remove the core. Find scriptures that speak and do get your Bible promise book or get the app online, scriptures of integrity, and quote those scriptures to you. Then ask the Lord to make you conscious of it to be of integrity in even the smallest things. Let me give you an example. Joyce Meyer used to talk about the basket. Before that, I never thought if I left the basket right there, right? I'm like, Joyce. Joyce, you're in, you're, you're in Walmart with me here. So I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm driving the car back around, going, put the basket back. But you know what? It's a point of consciousness of integrity in all areas. Command that spirit of loose. It comes from something. If you search the origin of it, let me try to think. See, because anything that is opposite from God will bring you in trouble. If you don't have integrity, you won't grow in the, the, the millions of dollars I know is supposed to hit that life of yours. So really, it's a spirit of bondage to be able, or poverty to keep. If I had to track it down, I would say it was poverty. Anybody agree? Yes. Spirit of poverty. Because, see, people don't understand. God will give you a little bit and say, now let me watch you with that. 
Then he'll advance you and advance you. He'll have you to go work at a company and then own the company. Find the core. Find out where it came. Was it a time when you just was in despair and, you know, just frustrated by a whole lot of other personal things and you just kind of got a little lax and then you end up in a place? Find the core, but go after it and make that conscious decision to monitor it. Anything I've messed up with or anything at any time I didn't hear God or heard God and didn't do exactly what they said or trusted the word of someone else. Oh, baby, I keep a note of that. So keep a conscious note. I hope that blesses you. Yes. Anyone else? Now, when you fast and when you see God, the Lord will show you things. So you mean the Lord don't tell y'all nothing about y'all spirit? Come on, nobody. Okay, here's one. So, so that means y'all got it good already, or y'all, <laughs> y'all got it together. Go ahead. I think mine um, is fear of man, and it's drawing people that bully me and try to intimidate me to me, and then that creates, I think, bitterness or unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to fight back or to pray. For that person? Mm-hmm. And that comes from... So he revealed that you were fearful of bullying people coming near you? No. I, for me, it's fear of man. And what it is, like, for example, in my workplace, I've had people that I'm supposed to supervise. And they will intimidate, bully, all kinds of things. Okay. All right. So let me just say this. So first of all, you need to know who you are. I need you to up your power. So that means you, you're going to have to go in a fast and figure out what the nature of this is. I would also say check your childhood or check any previous relationship. You might need to break soul ties with that because it could be the bullying from them that causes that spirit to rain upon you. And then the employees think they can do that to you. Because when supernatural power and authority comes upon you, they will respect you. I've had people that I'm just got jeans, a hat. You never know anything. I just feel like I need to call you ma'am. I said, oh, I'm just old. That's probably why. No. I said, just feel like I need. A the authority will demand respect. See, when people get too close in my, in my space and start getting common, I don't say anything. I just shut up. But inwardly, I bound. And it'll make that flaw, that, that playful thing get in line. So we need to figure out why your authority is not in place because you got, okay, so if the sheriff, you have the right to have the gun, you got the badge. I want to know why you don't know you can't shoot. You've been, you work for the force. They legally gave you a gun and you got a badge, but still you sitting there saying, oh, I don't think I'm going to shoot. So we need to figure out why. Track it down. See where it comes from. Also, are you too passive? I am. Why do you need friends? Why does it? Why do you need friends? Because you know you can't walk in a in in um, leadership and be friends with them. You can't supervise and be friends. Did you know that? No, you cannot. You cannot. That's a part of a leadership anointing. Eat, let's take it in the spirit realm. You do know when you rise to leadership, there's authority. There's a level of things you can and cannot do with certain people because you have to walk in a level of respect. So we need to try and figure out the core. Uh, why do you need friends? Why are you fearful of hurting their feelings? So who hurt your feelings? So you don't want to hurt anybody else's feelings. So you just go along. Even if you're boss, I'll go on and do it just to, you know. Mm. Got it? All right. All right. Somebody give me an intercessor for her for two days straight. Who's going who gonna to be an intercessor for her? Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to give you her name. And you're going to call her name out. Set your clock and your watch or whatever. Or your phone to ring every hour on the hour and intercede that she comes to her place and that the Lord give her revelation of what's making her do that because she already has the authority. 
Yes, man of God. Good evening, prophetess. Good evening. I'm trying to uh, ask God to give me the words to put this together. Um, he has been, over time, giving me uh, blueprints and visions to build in the marketplace as well as in ministry. Okay. I don't know if it's a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but there always have been certain blockages that comes up and it gets to the point where I just don't do anything and it mm -hmm. turns into procrastination. Mm -hmm. And I find myself like every six months or so asking God to bring things around that he gave me that I missed. And even one of your videos, your teaching that I saw, you were saying, what was it? Where we missed a shift. And I asked God to show me where did I miss the shift. Mm -hmm. He was showing me stuff on our four-hour drive coming here. Mm -hmm. But I keep asking. I, I, I'm, I think that what I was going through is why haven't I, you know, start? I found myself in the past spending hundreds, thousands of dollars in uh, teachings, in lectures, going to conferences to give me something that God already gave me. And to be honest, it's been a hindrance in my household. I hear my wife, she tell me all the time, you know what God told you to do. He's waiting on you. But I get to a point like, why I can't go forward? Why, why I can't start this? Why, why I get to the point, I know exactly what you tell me to do, but then when it's time to act, I don't know. I feel it's so, just so I would ask you a few questions. Who are you connected to? Who's lording over you? Who's put word curses over you? to create the doubt, who are you under? So you need to check those things. And I guarantee you, it come from one of those. Let me give you an example of a word curse. Somebody say, oh, you can't do that. You ain't called to do that. You're not anointed for that, okay? Or you're under someone that you're fearful of moving out from under, so you gotta just stay in the bondage. I'm just prophetically just sitting in your house. I just want you to know that, mm-hmm. Uh huh. But I want you to know who are you going to believe, God or man? All you need to do is ask the Lord to give you an open confirmation and say, God, now give me the path. Okay? When God wants you to step out, there will be such an urgency. You would have to be straight up disobedient to not do it. So my question to you, are you straight up disobedient? Yes. Oh, you know, I don't hang out with disobedient people. Did you know that? Okay, so why? If you honor and fear God, because disobedience, let me give it to you what you do. It'll stop the household. It'll mess the money up. It'll keep the relationship a mess. That means while you don't shift, nobody else shift. So that means you put everybody in jeopardy because that means if you're supposed to be in New York doing a great work in New York you're not only messing up everybody else while they're here they're getting in trouble because they're not where they need to be your turn well in with the disobedience I it, 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 I'm gonna be honest with you it started with the lion spirit all right because so I had to throw that in there because that ain't had nothing to do with what I was trying to talk about today because it, it well I know for a fact because I found myself at times in the past making excuses on why certain things I wasn't doing certain things are you fearful it's a possibility yes so who spoke word curses over you as a child Yandeho or Rabasha at the 
decree and declare today that that voice will come out of your head. It will not lord over you. And the person that spoke that, I send it back to the pits of hell. I call you forth today in Jesus' name. Everybody point your hand to him. We call you forth in Jesus' name. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Everybody say, and so shall it be. Wife, what do you, what, you all live in North Carolina? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk to him because until we get him to confess that he's not going to be disobedient anymore, because I told you I don't hang around with disobedient people. I need you to see one of my staff and I need you to book and try to, let me help you all. Yes, ma'am. Let me, praise the Lord. Are you disobedient too? I'm just going to ask. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm dealing with this so I could crawfish out this thing because I really don't have a room to put it, but I'm going to make a way. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Did she say no, ma'am? We've been going through, uh, it's a cycle. Yeah. It's a cycle. It's the words that were spoken over him and the words come up and he wants to be obedient because I don't feel you know, I usually know rebellion straight up. But the words that were spoken, they come back. And he may not have even said them to you, but they're in here. And because that person voice is so loud in there, it paralyzes him. And his head, it'll come. Revelation will come. Vision will come. But he can't put no feet to it. That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, praise the Lord for that. Man of God, are you ready to repent and ask the Lord to forgive you? And I need you to forgive those that person. I need you to I need you to strip the power off of them. Yeah, you're gonna tell them they got no power. Do you, you want to share who it was? You don't have to give name. Even if you and if they're not deceased or whatever, maybe we don't I don't want to create no trouble. Uh, it was it was my parents. Okay. All right, so let me tell you about parents. Parents are leaders. Their voices, even if they weren't even good parents or whatever, because of the order of God, their voice is loud. They're in here. Their words float over you. But nothing can oversee God. Nothing. So you can send it back. And you could say, I call on Abba. Abba is my father. And Lord, you take your rightful place. They will no longer be an idol in your life. Because that is an idol when you let that idol stop you from obeying God. So I'm going to pray for the Lord to give you a supernatural miracle. You know, the Lord gave me a supernatural miracle for me to be here. He did. He did. When I say transported, but you know what? It was all worth it if it was just for you. It was just for you. It was worth it. Because to be able to know that you're going to step out and you're going to come out. And let me say this. Now, you're made. Hmm. Where are you when you rate yourself with the religious spirit? Give me, give me a number. Because that's, that's part of the real problem. I'm trying to be nice, y'all. Prophet is trying to be real nice. Y'all see me? I'm calming myself. At one time, it was like a 10 plus. But I believe it's like a 3 4. Okay. So the 3 4 is just that you care what people think about you. Yeah. You care what they think about you, and you so want their approval. But let me give you a news flash. You don't want to mess with Jesus when he's trying to get you to do something. But today, we're going to break those word curses off of your mind. And we're going to ask the Lord to set you on a new path. Now, the word curses over from your parents must be moved. So, in my book, I talk about decreeing and declaring and moving the voices and killing the stronghold of the voices. And I really need you to understand and get that and work that book. Because it's going to bring you to the place that you need to be. 
but you got soul ties with the parents and the people that, you know, the word curses that they said. You also have a soul tie with the people that you really want to please. It's a soul tie, and it's stronger than your one with God. So that puts them in a place of an idol, and you need to move the idols. And then I promise you things will flow. It is will flow. So what, you're looking for somebody to endorse you? You need someone to endorse you? I'm, I'm just talking. I'm not prophetically in your business anymore. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice, y'all. Um, at one time when I, I was called, I received from God himself in 2013 about walking in the ministry. And I have been. But okay. I have been walking in religion. Okay. Um, I just became born again last year. Oh, really? So I was in religion from 2013 to 2022. But Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes, ma'am. Oh, evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. Well, amen what? All right, that's, you got my language. Okay, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. I look, I need to hear. I need to hear, sweet. I just need to hear. Walking in a new life, walking in the fullness of God. How's your prophetic? That uh, actually, we did a fast. We one day, and I, I remember it vividly. We uh, we didn't have service at the hotel where we usually have it. We was not going to have service one day, and someone called and said they wanted to visit our church. So at the last minute, we was like, what are we going to do? So my wife said, like, let's do it at home. So we moved furniture around and just, just tell everybody we was doing church at home. But we were on a fast. Like we was on a 21-day fast. And we were just fasting. And when I went to give the message of the day, I heard the Lord said to anoint everyone's feet. Mm -hmm. So everyone... I, at the service, everyone came and I washed their feet. But when You I washed, washed their feet or anointed their feet? Well, I, I washed their feet. Okay. But I anointed everyone as well. Mm -hmm. I just, that's what God told me to do. But when in the process of doing it, he gave me certain revelations through, I mean, for certain people that were there. Okay. That never happened. With mm -hmm. me before, and it's because I was walking in religion. Mm -hmm. So certain things I've started experiencing after I became born again, I was like, "Wow!" It just it gave me a new love for for God. Mm -hmm. I thought I loved God mm -hmm. in the years past. I understand, but it was more of a just a knowledge thing. Yeah, because I challenge everything based on knowledge and not on spirit. I was a Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. I knew scripture, but I didn't have an intimate relationship with Christ. Well, let me ask you this. Have you forgiven your parents? I believe I did. Mm -hmm. I really, I, I believe I did. And, and I even when I was talking to my wife. Oh, but their words are still over your head. Did you know that? I, yes. Yes, I do. What does the voices sound like? I'm doing too much. I'm doing too much. It don't take all that. Um, your what? house is too big. Voice of religion. Yes. Voice of religion. So you're bound by the spirit of religion that you're fighting that. And it wants to keep you held down. Yes, Just make sure of the mixture. Because see, when you're coming out of religion, it'll make you mix voices. There'll be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You might take some old way and mix with it, and then you got a mixture of it. So when you make the full transfer, I need you to make it completely and don't bring nothing from the old. Nothing. Do you understand? Because, you know, you know, sometimes you bring some of those old people, they'll still want to wear the chapel caps. They still want to do many of the old ways. And not that I have no issue with that, because I don't believe it keep you from going to heaven. But however, it will bring the spirit of religion, which will keep deliverance from out of you. 
and moving through you. So I'm going to say this. I need you to forgive those people just, 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 just by chance in case there's just a little bit of it left somewhere deep down in there and somewhere some of their practices are down in there and causes you to disobey so the Lord can elevate you to the place that he wants and then he can give you the breakthrough to go to the next level. Do you know when I stepped fully out of religion, I went completely into obedience and went to the nation. So I'm going to tell you something I did. Maybe about six months before I went to the nation, there was a message, it's on, it's on YouTube, it's called The Nation Awaits. The Lord prophetically was telling me what was to happen. So I'm going to tell you today that the nation awaits. But it awaits your obedience. But one thing I'm going to ask you, please don't take religion in there or it will not last. It will not. Religion will not draw. Religion will not keep you solid. You'll mix. You'll taint it. You'll put a little bit of that with it. And then it's, it's, going, to move, it's going to move the hand of God. Otherwise, you will not have to worry. They'll never, you'll never have to worry about shame coming. You ready to do this now? Why don't you turn to your wife and tell her you're sorry for disobeying and keeping that curse over that home first. Let's clear that up. Baby, I'm sorry for being disobedient and bringing whatever curse that came along with it on our home and over our family. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Now let's get it right. You know, you got to get it right with the lady first. Yeah, you, you know, because the word says you don't get it right with her. Your prayers will be hindered. So we're going to get it right with her first. Now let's go to the Father. I need you to forgive. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when new videos are released. Prophetess Miranda's new book called Prophetic War and Decree will teach you how to war and decree for your breakthrough. This book is guaranteed to make you a warrior and step into the place God has called you to be. To purchase the book and get information on upcoming healing and deliverance services and events, make sure to visit our main website at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to give to the ministry, visit our website or text the word GIVE to 504 500 4776